Any idea which Elvis album has the most Don Robertson songs on it? Well, it might surprise you to know that it's actually this one, Funny in Acapulco. So, for a while now, I've wanted to do a video where I could show you all, or most, of the Japanese pressings on one particular album. And that's what I'm going to do today with this particular album, Funny in Acapulco. And uh, this was a kind of a pivotal album in some ways. For me, it's probably the last decent soundtrack album. And if Elvis had stopped making soundtrack albums at that point, I think history probably would have been a bit kinder to his soundtrack albums. So there would have been seven pretty decent soundtrack albums had they stopped there. But alas, there were ten more to come. And uh, yeah, as I say, this is probably the last of the decent ones. Although I do have a, a soft spot for the Spin Out album. Another thing that was um, pivotal about this album is it was the last album released in mono in Japan. This is that mono copy um, with the RA number at the back. And another thing that was um, to end after this album was Japanese on the front covers. So if you look at the top right corner, just above the Nippa logo, you can see there is some Japanese text here. And that's actually the title of the album in Japanese. And they started to do that with Japanese covers, putting the title in Japanese on the front, in uh, 1961. Um, before that, the covers had been all in English. And then for some reason, in 1961, they started to put the title in Japanese in the top right corner here. But then they stopped after this album here, the Funny Nakapulko album. So the back cover is fairly typical for the period. At the top, you've got all... Uh, Japanese and then you've got the English lyrics at the bottom. I'll just talk a little bit about the liner notes on here. The first thing it says actually in Japanese is this uh, Presley à la carte. So why they use the French expression on a Japanese album to talk about an American singer appearing in a movie based in Acapulco, I have no idea. Um, but anyway, it says Presley à la carte and the first um, row and a bit is a summary of Elvis's life and achievements up to the Bossa Nova Baby and Witchcraft single. It ends with chart positions of those songs. And then the rest of the liner notes um, is made up of a summary of the movie plot and it tells you which songs come in and uh, how they fit into that plot. At the bottom you have the English lyrics as normal. Uh, there's something quite unusual about um, one of the titles here. In English at the top there it's got the title Margalerta for Margarita. And it also has Margleta on the lyrics section here. However, the lyrics, in the lyrics themselves, it's spelt correctly as Margarita. And um, they've also got the title correct in Japanese as well, Margarita. Another little mistake here on the back is Bossa Nova Baby. The title in English at the top here is Bossa Neva Baby, although they get it right at the bottom. It does sometimes surprise me how they can manage to get a difficult expression correct in the lyrics, but then make a mistake with a very easy expression. So for example, in the song No Room to Rumba in a Sports Car, um, it says, there's no room to rumba in a sports car. You can move forward or back. There's no room to do what the beat tells you to without throwing your spine out of whack. So they've got the spine out of whack, which is quite a difficult expression, but they've made a basic mistake like you can move forward or back. Here's the record. This is a typical mono label. Like um, American albums in the early 60s, the Japanese albums did not say mono on them um, because obviously that had been the standard up to 1960. So the Japanese mono albums never state um, mono anywhere, not even on the covers. As I've mentioned before, 60s albums, especially early 60s albums with the OB are very difficult to find. So I was very happy to get this recently. This is the first stereo copy with the dark blue OB, typical design of the time. Um, just occasionally you could find some mistakes on the Obis and this one actually also has a, a little error here. You can see the number 15 in the bottom left corner there. That's actually saying there are 15 songs on the LP but of course there are only 13. On the back, uh, it's again typical for the period, it's almost blank. It's just got the catalogue number and the Japanese title uh, as well. The cover itself is almost exactly the same as the mono one, uh, exactly the same liner notes and lyrics complete with the same mistakes. Here's the label and uh, basically all the 60s Victor stereo albums had this design from 1961 onwards. It never changed right the way through until Speedway. So there were six different 
pressings or six different versions, if you like, of the Furin Acapulco album in Japan. Uh, those were the first two which I've just shown you there. The third one was this one here. Uh, you can see in the top corner here it's now on RCA. And this is a very thin cover, just like the two I showed you before. And the back cover is exactly the same as those two as well. Even the uh, little summary of Elvis's life, it stops here at 1963. And the mistakes are all still there. Nothing, nothing has been changed at all on the back. And if you look closely, you might think, where have the fold-in that's gone? There's some cutaways and fold-overs usually here at the, uh, at the back. Um, but they're actually on the inside of this cover for some reason. This is the label, it's on RCA, and it's Victor Company of Japan, so this would have been released sometime between 69 and 72. I don't think it's one of the very first ones because it doesn't have that um, thick, a deep groove around the outside of the label, so it's probably from 70 or 71. The fourth version was basically the same as that, um, except it was manufactured by Victor Musical Industries, so that would have been out from 72 to 75. I don't have that one, but it's uh, almost exactly the same, except the manufacturer is different. So when Elvis died, uh, of course there were a lot of reissues here in Japan, and there was a series of them which had an OB that looked very much like this one here. So this was one of 15 albums uh, in a series. And this was the first time that this album had been released in Japan with the American back cover. Here's a label for the 1977 issue. Again, it's on RCA. There's some slight layout differences between this one and the first one, but it's uh, fairly similar. So because the lyrics and liner notes were no longer on the back cover, uh, they printed them all on a separate insert here. And um, I'm happy to say that they have changed the title, of, corrected the title of Margarita and Bossa Nova Baby. But the lyrics to No Room to Rumba in a Sports Car still read you can move forward or back. Um, and as often was the case with the 70s albums, they completely redid the liner notes. So these Japanese liner notes are written by a different person to the one on the 60s pressings. And just like in Britain and probably in America, music journalism got better in the 70s and 80s. So the liner notes tend to be a little bit better on these uh, later pressings. In the liner notes, the writer basically starts by comparing Elvis' image as a movie star in the 60s to his image as uh, a performer in the 1970s. And um, at some point in the middle of the liner notes there, she talks about Elvis still being on top after all these years. So these liner notes would have been written just prior to Elvis dying. She, she doesn't mention Elvis' death in here at all. Um, and then it goes on to talking about um, the songs in the movie and it goes into a little bit more, more depth than the first album, and it even mentions that uh, Guadalajara is uh, a Mexican folk song. The liner notes also point out that there were two other singles from the album released in Japan, apart from Bossa Nova Baby. One was Ferran Acapulco, and this was the other one, uh, Mexico, with uh, what's on the B-side, You Can't Say No, in Acapulco. And um, this was actually the only single released in Japan as living stereo only. So there was no mono pressing of this, it was only released like that in Living Stereo. And this was actually the last Living Stereo single, Elvis Living Stereo single released in Japan. So there's a bit of an irony there in that um, this album marked the end of the era of stereo singles, at least for a while, whereas the album uh, was the final version to be released in mono. Just finally, a few titles that may be of interest to you. The album title itself in Japanese is uh, Acapulco Sea. Um, the title of Margarita is uh, Itoshi no Margarita, which is like the lovely Margarita in Japanese. And you're probably familiar with the uh, Eric Clapton song, Leila, and that in Japanese is called Itoshi no Reira. It's the same thing, the lovely Leila. Um, there's no room to run, but in the sports car was translated into Japanese as it's too cramped in a sports car. So they didn't translate the song literally because uh, it wouldn't have made any sense. So as in English speakers, we understand what rumba actually means. But uh, if you just translate that literally into Japanese, it wouldn't make any sense. And uh, one other one is, you can't say no in Acapulco, is actually Acapulco love song in Japanese. There was one more version of the album which was released in 1985. And uh, it was basically exactly the same as this one 
but with a new obi so the cover the insert and the record and the catalog number everything was exactly the same except it had a 50th anniversary blue and white obi i think they were just getting rid of the, the final stocks so they gave it a new obi and put it in that series uh, so if you're looking for a good copy a very good copy of this album from japan uh, which is uh, not difficult to find you can pick it up cheaply this is a good bet uh, this one from 1977 one from 1985 if you can find it it's just, as i say it's the same album um, but it'll probably cost you more money the orange ones like this are very hard to find but they don't usually sell for very much so if you can pick one up uh, if you can find one at, at a good price then that would be a good buy also the mono one is quite difficult to find now because it was the last mono album, as I said. So this one probably cost you a little bit more than the orange one from 69. The stereo one, this one can be found very easily. But if, like this one here, it's got the OB on it, you can expect to pay about $200 for this one. All right, so there we go. Those are the six versions of Fun and Acapulco released in Japan. That's it for this week. Take care. Thanks for watching.